Hello, my name is Hans and today at Rimmer Brothers we're going to be changing the timing chain and sprockets and all the innards on a Triumph Stag engine. As you can see I'm demonstrating on an engine out of the car because it's easy to video and you can see how I'm going to be doing the job without everything getting in the way. Fairly simple, we just have to uh, undo the top covers and then line everything up and then I'll show you through what we do next. Firstly we need to remove the camshaft covers. There's two screws at the front and four along the back. I'll just undo the two front ones and the rear ones I've already loosened. Once they loose we should be able to lift it up the way. Might be stuck with a gasket and after you removed it you might need to clean all the gasket bits off the face before refitting. Before we undo anything on the timing chain, it's important that we line up number two cylinder at top dead centre and make sure that the camshaft mark and the mark on the camshaft carrier cap are both lined up together. This applies to both camshafts and as you can see I've tipexed mine in white so they're easy to see. Yours won't be easy to see but when you line up top dead centre with the pulley here they should line up and you'll be able to tipex them and make them easy to see. I'm just going to turn it round. Hopefully when this lines up, the line on there will line up with the line there. Same on this camshaft here. The two timing marks on this side I haven't tipexed yet, but before we do that, if we just clean the oil off, and then you'll see the line here, it's just above that hole where the screw goes in. If we use a tipex marker we can line that and the two little grooves on there. They should now be more or less in line. Okay, so now we've lined up all the timing chain. We need to remove these two little rubber infill pieces, put them to one side. They should always be replaced. And first job I'm going to do is undo the main crankshaft bolt. To do this, you need to remove the radiator and come in through the front underneath or from the top if you can. I usually use an impact wrench but if you haven't got one you'll have to lock the flywheel and use a spanner or a wrench to undo this. This has already been loosened and we undo this and if we can't pull this off we need to use an extractor or a soft mallet just to carefully tap it. Don't hit it with a hammer because you'll break the pulley now we've removed the crankshaft pulley, we need to remove all these bolts and some of the sump bolts underneath so that we can withdraw this carefully outwards. These are 7 sixteenths, ever so tricky, um, but a bit of patience and you'll get them all out. Okay, I've loosened all the bolts. These two just hold the timing plate on so we don't need to remove those. But a lot of these bolts are different size lengths, so when you remove them, note the different lengths. And if you want to make a template, lay them in order so that you know which are the correct ones to put them back in. There's five bolts that hold the sump underneath. It's important we take all those out and then keep all the bolts together in the right order. Okay, so as you can see, we've removed all the bolts five under there, all those, and now we need to gently tap on the side of this cover, not to get it off, but just to, just to break the seal. You'll hear it when it goes. But before we do any more, we need to get a knife in between the sump, well, in between the cover and the sump gasket, so that we don't break the gasket that's on between the sump and the front cover. So I'm going to use a really fine scraper blade and hopefully wedge it in between. If we can't get it in between I shall loosen some more of the sump bolts. As you can see it's starting to go in and I shall carefully work my way around until we've actually separated the gasket from the cover. Okay so we're just going to finish. As you can see it slid nicely in there and if we carefully work it all the way across, 
we've actually saved the gasket from being damaged and uh, we can then just silicon it back and we shouldn't have any oil leaks. Now we can tap the cover some more. And gently remove the cover. Okay, next job is to remove these two bolts that hold the sprockets onto the camshafts. As you can see, one's easy to get at and one's not so easy. So I'm going to do put the crankshaft pulley back on and then turn it around so we can get at the bottom bolt, undo that and then retime it back up to the top where the two marks up here line up together. Before we turn anything I'm going to just put some extra timing marks on the crankshaft and on the engine block so that we can move the crankshaft and put it back to where it was. So now I've put that I can turn this by hand and now we can get to the bottom bolt on there. Now we've turned the crankshaft we can get to the bottom bolt and the locking tab washer and we can knock the tab off and then loosen and remove the bolt. We need to do the same on the other side so that we don't disturb the timing once again. Be very careful not to drop this down into the sump and remove the bolt and do the same with the other side. Having undone the two lower bolts on the camshafts we can now by hand turn the crankshaft and you can see the two timing marks that I put on with Tepex earlier we can line them up to more or less where it was before. Now the camshafts are back in alignment. Now we've rotated it back and we can get to the top bolt and tab washer back and remove the bolt and being very careful not to drop either the tab washer or the bolt into the sump. Having removed these two bolts, we now go to the left hand head and we've previously removed the bottom tab washer and uh, removed the bolt. Now we can remove the top one. Being careful not to drop it or the tab washer into the bottom. As you can see, we've now withdrawn the main crankshaft pulley and we can see the oil thrower which just removes the keyways stay on and don't generally come off. Now we remove that we can undo the chain tensioner and then the guides for the chain which I shall do next. Okay I've cracked off these two bolts and if we hold it in together hold the tension in that little spring in there we can undo the two bolts and carefully lower it down. There is a plate and a backing block so try and keep it all together and not drop any of the parts. We now need to remove this plate by undoing these bolts. Careful not to break this gasket because that's the head gasket and we don't need to, uh, if we break that the heads will have to come off. So we carefully undo these two bolts. Now we've loosened these two bolts, the top one can be withdrawn without any problem but in between the timing chain guide there's a spacer which is well, will fall out when you withdraw this bolt so feel it it'll be a bit loose and catch it as it falls out when you withdraw the bolt. There's the spacer and now we can slowly withdraw the plate that holds the camshaft in service mode. Now the sprocket is held by this little bolt just a little dowel in the end of the camshaft. We wiggle it free we can now drop it down slightly or unhook the chain from the sprocket. Once we've unhooked the chain we can remove the sprocket and 
unhook the chain from the lower sprocket and we'll draw it out the top or the bottom. Before we start the left hand timing chain I've just realised there's a little space behind this which we must carefully remove out of the way before it drops down and gets stuck or lost anywhere. Once we remove this we can remove that guide and this guide. This guide is just held on with one bolt here and this is an adjusting slotted bolt which needs adjusting to the correct position when you put it all back together again. Carefully remove the top bolt and you'll see the spacer is the same on here when we withdraw it as the lower one that I removed previously. Once the bolt comes out remove the spacer. Now everything has been removed from the right hand head we can start removing everything from the left hand head. First job is to remove the tensioner. Remove the bolts, squeeze the tensioner in to stop it springing out everywhere. Very carefully remove all the bolts. And then carefully, there's a little plate behind it and a dowel and as you can see the plate has dropped down but fortunately you've been caught on the edge of the sump. Don't lose the little dowel that plugs in there on the other one that's remained in the block. We now need to remove this plate that holds the camshaft in position when the head's removed up here and I'm going to withdraw this plate downwards. So I'll carefully hold the plate and withdraw it through the bottom. Before we remove the timing chain, we have the crankshaft on number two cylinder at top dead centre. Timing locks up there are aligned, and we're looking at the jack shaft sprocket. Now these two lines here, and there should be a dowel which is on the right hand side and just this one's be pointing just lower than three o'clock. I'm going to add another little timing mark with a little dowel up there and put a mark on there. If I was going to reuse the same sprocket, we're going to replace this sprocket but it's really easy to put a new mark just in between those two holes and line it up with that mark. We need to remove the bolt holding the jack shaft sprocket and knock back the tab washer. We can then, I'm going to lock the sprocket through the hex bit of the hole and if we carefully hold it we can crack the nut off. Now we can undo the bolt. As you can see there's a locking dowel in that hole of the sprocket and in the other hole opposite is where the tang for the locking tab washer fits in. So when it comes to renewing this that's where the dowel goes and that's where the sprocket tang goes. This sprocket now needs to be withdrawn off the dowel and in this case it's quite a tight fit on that one so I'm having to gently lever it backwards and forwards. It's being quite stubborn but eventually it's popped off. We can now withdraw the top sprocket and the chain gently wiggling it sideways if we can get the dowel to pop out the camshaft, lower it down slightly and then carefully without damaging anything withdraw it out the top. To remove the uh, sprockets on the crankshaft we need to use a puller and to stop any damage to the internal threading or the face of this I've ground down the head of a bolt which nicely snugly fits into the bottom and when we put pressure on there it's going to push against the inside of the crankshaft and not do any damage to the outside face. As you can see we've attached the puller nice and evenly and uh, gently turning it you can see it withdrawing the sprocket the shaft. We have removed the second sprocket 
And as you can see, there are some shims at the back. We're going to leave those shims there, and then when we put the new sprockets on, we'll have to make sure that the alignment is correct with the old original shims. To get the bit we put in there, I'm going to use a little magnetic pickup tool. And as you can see, don't forget to remove the bolt space we use to protect the threads inside. The last two pieces to remove are these two chain guides. I've cracked the bolts and loosened them. Just need to unscrew, carefully remove each one. Carefully withdraw it. Before we scrape all the gasket off, I'm just going to put some paper towel in here to catch any bits that might fall in there. Once we've done that, we can get a gasket scraper and carefully remove all the gasket material. Now we can scotch bright, clean up all the faces and make sure there's no bits of gasket left. As you can see, it's all looking nice and clean. I shall then blow out any of the holes, any bits of dirt out and make sure it's all nicely degreased before assembly. We've made sure that the crankshaft is all nicely clean, no bits of dirt or muck, and we're going to fit the sprocket on. Make sure that it lines up with the keyway. We should be able to push it on so far. And then I'm using a bit of tube that fits nicely over the keyway, and I'm going to gently tap it all on. So now I just need to get a bit more tube and knock it the rest of the way. Here's an extra bit of tube that I'm going to use to tap it all the way snugly down to the end. You'll notice when it hits the other end because the tone of the knocking changes. And next we need to make sure that this is in alignment with all the other sprockets. Before fitting the new jack shaft sprocket, as you can see I've marked up the old one that lined up with the marks and I've got the new one and overlaying the two I've made a new mark to give the same position as the original sprocket. That way our ignition timing will be just where it was before we took it to pieces. We fitted the sprocket onto the dowel and it's nicely snugly fitted. Now we can put the bolt in with the locking tab washer Note the tang fits in the little hole opposite the dowel. Screw this in and we can tighten it up to a torque figure which is £38 per foot. To tighten up the bolt I'm using a uh, hex wrench put into the retaining plate bolt just to keep it steady and now I can tighten it up until it clicks. Choose a tab that lines up with one of the flats on the nut and then we need to use a chisel just to bend it away and then I'm using a normal punch just to flatten it up. Now we need to check the alignment of this sprocket and the crankshaft sprocket. I'm using a straight edge sliding it up and down this and it should line perfectly with the edge of the crankshaft sprocket. If it doesn't we need to either remove or add shims behind this sprocket so that it lines up with this teeth on here with this sprocket. As you can see we've put some paper towel down here to stop any screws, washers or anything falling into the sump and causing any problems. We're going to refit the chain guide on this side just with one bolt and hold it in there at the moment. Same with the top guide. Just going to hold it in with one bolt at the moment. As you can see, the old sprocket has this dowel and pin arrangement and needs to be removed and fitted to the centre of the new sprocket. 
it's only held in as the press fit on this round piece here so I'm going to use a socket to support the underneath I don't want to hammer on top of the thread so I'm going to screw a nut onto the top now we can use a punch and hammer and hopefully remove the pin. The uh, piece that slides onto that shoulder, you can see it's not threaded, it's just an interference fit and that gets pressed onto that shoulder and holds the sprocket centrally and it can turn as well. The sprocket can be fitted either way around and I'll pop that through the bottom over the top and I'm going to use a socket and gently tap it into position. Job done. Before fitting the timing chain make sure that you've got the longer one of the two and also that the crankshaft marks are lined up, the jack shaft is lined up where we had it and also the camshaft. Once we're happy those are all there we can lower the chain through the top and loosely feed it over the bottom. This is a bit fiddly because it always gets stuck somewhere. We'll now have to move this one a few teeth at a time till the bolt hole lines up with the camshaft. We've located the top sprocket into the camshaft and if we can look the holes should be about lined up. If they're not we can use a sp spanner at the end of the cram camshaft and just gently move it one way or the other until the screw goes in lovely and easily. Once it goes in lovely and easily we can then fit the tab washer and the screw being very careful not to drop anything as we tighten it up. Just tighten up gently the one bolt and later on we can rotate it and do the lower one. We can now fit the camshaft sprocket support bracket. I'm going to feed it in from below, locate it over the threaded bit there and then find the bolt holes. I'll just nip them up and we'll tighten them up later when we've adjusted the guides themselves. Before fitting the new tensioner, as you can see, this is the old one that came out for the lower chain. This has a locating dowel and on the lower one it stayed in the tensioner but on the upper one it stayed in the block. So uh, I'm just going to gently remove that and I'll show you the difference with the new one. I'm just showing you the difference between the old tensioner and the new tensioner. The old one has a locating dowel and the new one just has the oil feed hole and the back plates are different as well. The old one has a little extra bit that catches on there if for any reason it overextends too far. Also this little plastic bit is important that keep that in position while you're refitting it because if you pull it out and compress the tensioner it will release and then it will all come out and the spring will go everywhere and we'll have to reinsert it. We put the bolts through the tensioner and the back plate and now we have to carefully fit it into position and screw in the bolts. Once we've screwed these in we can tighten them up to the right torque setting. Having tightened up these two bolts to 10 pounds per foot, we can now make sure that this tensioner is in line with the chain and gently nip up the nut bolts there. And then we need to insert a feeler gauge, actually one millimeter in between the chain and the guide, making sure this is still in position. And then we need to adjust the top curved tensioner to take up any play in the chain once we've got that 
nicely snug. We can tighten up that curved tensioner. And finally, just nip up the other two. We then tighten those up to the right torque setting. Having tightened up these four bolts to 20 pounds per foot and making sure that that's nice and clear at the top, we can then withdraw the safety bit and then we're going to refit the lower sprocket ready for the right hand bank. For the right hand head we fitted the sprocket on the crankshaft using the same method as the other one with the tube and we've tapped it on and as with the top sprocket we've removed and replaced the little spigot that holds it in position when the camshaft's removed. Once we've done this we can lower the chain through the top and carefully, not damaging the gasket, locate where the top bolt here locates and fitting it onto the we might need to move it around one or two teeth to get it to line up. We'll fit the upper chain guide and there's a spacer that we fit in the upper hole and I'm going to put the bolt through it so it keeps it and we'll fit the bottom one in later and we'll fit that up in that position. Fitting the lower chain guide I'm going to fit it using a small bolt in the oval adjusting hole and uh, we'll put the other one in later. We need to fit, fit the camshaft support guide and also there's a larger bush that fits in this guide. If we hold that in position, slide that up so it locates on the top camshaft and then slide the big bolt through and we can tighten that in. Need to do the same with this one but that has a smaller spacer. Here's the right hand chain tensioner. This has a spacer block fitted at the rear and as you can see I've still got that plastic spacer and we need to carefully fit it into position. Once we've got two bolts in we can tighten those up to uh, £10 per foot. Having lined up the camshaft and put this top bolt in and nipped it up nice and tight we can now adjust the chain guide and we'll put the one millimeter feeler gauge in between there and then push the guide up as you can see it's making it go tensioned up both sides of the chain. We can then tighten up the adjusting bolts and remove the feeler gauge. Finally, removing the plastic spacer. We're going to remove the old front crank oil seal and to do that I'm going to use an old bearing race which is smaller than the seal but should be able to knock it all the way through. Before fitting the new seal, I'm just going to clean the area. I'm going to lightly oil the new seal just to help it go in. Once it's lightly oiled, centre it with a block of wood, tap it into position. Make sure it's all nice and flush. That should be okay. One final check that all the timing marks that we've used all line up on both camshafts and down here. Don't forget to replace the oil thrower and we're now going to put a bead of silicon on the gasket so that uh, when we tighten it up we shouldn't get any oil leaks. Here we've slightly trimmed some of the gaskets because they're a little bit longer than what they should be 
and I've used some gasket jointing just to hold them in position so that they don't fall out of place. When it's all lined up we can then offer it up and carefully not scrape all the new silicon sealant off the bottom. If we carefully keeping it so that it's pushing up against the head gaskets but not trapping anything. As you can see it's snugly goes back into position. Making sure that the front cover is located properly in all its dowels we've now inserted all the front cover bolts. If we use a template to make sure they go in the same holes they came out with that's great but make sure that they are the right length and we torque those down to 20 pounds per foot. Once that's tightened up we can then fit the top bolts and the sump lower bolts. These lower bolts are tightened up to 20 but we'll just have to tighten these ones up to uh, what we can do with a spanner. Before fitting the front crank pulley we just need to oil the surface where it fits onto the oil seal and then locate the keyway and push it home. Okay we fitted the front crank pulley and as you can see the timing marks are nicely lined up to where we started and we fitted the bolts. That's got a spacer in there because the viscous fans are missing at the moment. So now we turn it clockwise until we can get to the other bolt on the tab washer. When it's lined up we can fit a new bolt in there. We fitted the bolt and tightened it up to £10 per foot and we've also done the same with the other side and now we're going to find a tab that lines up with a flat and then tap it so it locks it in position. We'll do the same on the other side and then rotate it back to do the other ones. We fitted new rubber cups in these grooves and we're going to lubricate the chain really well. Turn it round, keep going until we're happy that there's lots of oil everywhere around the chain. Doing the same on the other side and then when we're happy we can fit the camshaft cover. As you can see this has got a new gasket so should seal on there quite happily. So that's the camshaft covers fitted, that then completes the timing chain.